Hi, I'm Tony. Welcome to the Heritage Line. This is the first time I've ever filmed. So you'll have to excuse the quality of the camera work. Never edited before, but I've been inspired by many YouTubers doing model railways. The scale I actually model in is Engage. So, first of all, I'll take you over to the test track, show you what I'm doing there, and then we'll have a look at the Heritage Line. So, I'll be right back. So, this is my little test track. Simple figure of eight on the inside and a circle on the outside. Originally it was just a figure of eight, but I decided I wanted an outside as well. I realised quite early on that some locals just did not like the tight curves. So it's a case of deciding, you know, which room best, which work best, and just having a play. I use this board both for DC and DCC. Are you, at the minute we're just running low codes in, so they're currently on DC, but eventually we'll have a go at chipping them, and we'll test them on DCC. So this is the heritage line. This is my engaged layout. As I take you through it, you will probably recognise it as a quite a famous heritage line. I've been building it over a few years now, on and off, but unfortunately about two years ago I had to make a move. And the layout came with me and this hasn't run since the move I know it's been a while but as nature takes it you have other jobs to do and this was the first time I've actually managed to get all my engaged stuff together so I've been sorting out what I need what I don't need any additional stock that I need and I've just been building it up so I'm getting to the stage now where I want to get this thing running so before I can do that I need to check the electrics, make sure the plugs are work, make sure there's no dodgy connections and then get all the track clean, see if she works. So I'll be taking you along for that journey too. So we'll pan around and we'll have a look at another point in the station. So we'll take you out and we'll move you around. So that's the actual station plan. I'm sure many of you have got ideas what it's going to be. But we'll carry on round. There's the hill. And away she goes round the corner. Unfortunately, as you've probably noticed, it's been a little bit of damage. A couple of the signals have got damaged. Nothing to worry about, easily replaced. So I'm going to take you through a little montage now and you'll get an idea where it started and when I got to this stage. When we come back, I'll show it dressed. And here she is dressed. I've got a hell of a lot of work to do on her. I intend doing an autumn period, not the easiest of periods, but I'm going to give it a try, see if we can get some nice colour in there. I've got a few ideas with the ballasting, I'm going to use two different kinds of ballast, and we'll just 
take it day by day, step by step. We've got work to do on the platform, work to do on the buildings. And ten putting lights in it as well. So we'll just see how we go. So just a little bit more of a close-up of the station. But this isn't going to be my first modelling project. I feel I need to get my modelling skills back. Not modelled for a few years. So I need to get my hand in again. Try and get my me, me skill level back there again. So before I start this, I'll be concentrating more on Swade's Pond. So I'm going to take you over to Swade's Pond now. And we'll have a little play and I'll show you what I'm going to do on that. So here it is, this is how the layout actually used to look. It was originally built by Barry Green and Trevor Spinks. It was a continental layout. It measures four foot by two foot. This picture was taken on Bridlington Station, one of the places it's been exhibited. So I've got it now, it's about 14 years old we reckon. I've probably had it for about 10 years, 11 years. I'm going to anglicise it. So we'll take you through to the present state it is in now. So this is one end of the layout. That tunnel mouth I actually put in but I'm not happy with it. So I'm going to have another look at that area as well. But it's just simple, a few sidings and a loop. So we'll take you over to the other end so you can see what that looks like. So this is what the other end of the layout actually looks like. So I've got a few ideas for it, I've collected one or two bits for it. So we'll take you through and I'll show you what ideas I've actually got. Right, to start with, I've got some of the Metcalf retaining walls. I intend to actually do only part built at the minute. Let's give you an idea. I'm going to line them up along here. So they're going to replace the rock face and other things I've got in the Metcalf. I've got some more walling. We have a railway bridge. We have the tunnel mouse and some more retaining walling. Building wise, we've got an engine shed. I think this was originally a Backman one. I know it was quite expensive at the time, so I hate to think how much it actually be worth now. I've also got a couple of industrial buildings. So we've got a building like that. I've also got another one. And what other bits and pieces have I got? My idea really is that this is going to be a motive power depot. I was thinking I might do it as a Wabtec one. Because they tend to get a lot of different vehicles in. Lots of different liveries. And I've got a very tight curve on the top. So I'm very limited to what locals can actually run around that. So that counts out anything that's a 47, 57, 60. I just feel they're too long. So I'm going to be looking at short base locos. Probably quite a few Gronks, which otherwise known as Class 08s, but I've always known them as Gronks. I'm sure many enthusiasts out there have as well. Possibly Class 20s, maybe a 25, 24. Can't beat a few rats, can you? Anyway, so I'm looking at a maintenance depot and I thought for this layout I'll do something a little bit different. I'm going to actually do it as an open day. So we're going to have a few visitors around, we're going to have one or two stalls on there. I've got a couple of vehicles, what we've got here. We've got the good old Oxford hot dog stand. We have... An ambulance, well you've got to have one of those on standby, you never know what's going to happen at the Motive Power Depot. Uh, also got a 
coach nice little bus not sure yet how I'm going to use all these because I've got the ice cream van got to be able to have an ice cream while you're watching your trains haven't you got that's little Herbie not sure yet if he's going to go on this layout yet if he'll end up on the heritage line so we'll have to wait and see on that one I've got some other bits and pieces as well for scenery good old scale model scenery there we go we've got some fencing Cause some shells to go in the depot now then on this one this is a PD Marsh diesel fueling points so I've got that to build and I've also got an old Nightwing gantry crane so I've got that to go on and I've also got a bit of concrete fencing Uh, this is the gem site fencing barriers. I'm not sure what I'm going to use on these yet. I won't really know so I'll start building it up, get the scenery done, and we'll just see where it leads me. But for now, I've got to do the electrics. No point in building the scenery until you know that it actually runs. So I'm going to take you over to the back now and you can have a look at that nest. So be right back so this is the back view of Swade's Pond as you can see I've inherited some nice wiring to do I must admit a few years ago I did have a crack at this before and this was just a temporary measure anyway I was always going to rewire it but now is the time to rewire it I'll just pan you around slowly as you can see three sidings at the top and the wiring trails off there to a sponge end the trap below is just a simple circuit this is the actual power input going into the bottom track and all it does is it splits into two lines there you wonder what these are these are actually what we use to change the points just a simple wire through junction box just clip it back clip it forward simple as on the points on the actual bottom it's just a case of there you go change it by hand nice and simple so I'm not worried about the bottom circuit at all probably just wants a good clean but it's that little lot so my first job really is to get it running before I can do any scenery. So that will be my next job. But that's for another chapter. So thank you for looking. Hope you enjoyed what you see. And I will catch up with you later soon. So bye for now.